shields that they had were these, they're like doors. They were like these huge uh, shields that they would carry. And they were often covered with a real heavy leather on the shields. And they would, they would cover them with those heavy leathers so they could extinguish the arrows or they could keep the arrows from going in it. And, and the shields were about four feet long and about two and a half feet wide. And, and if you if you ever seen the old movies when people would fight long before guns and stuff, if you saw Lord of the Rings or something, you would see this huge barrage of arrows just coming at people. And so they would have these shields so they could hide behind them. So when these arrows came at them, they would have something to protect them from the arrows. Now, Satan's arrows here, notice they're not just regular arrows, they're flaming arrows. And of course, you know, back in those days that one of the, the technologies of war was not only to shoot an arrow, but to light it on fire. Why? Because when it would hit a building, guess what it would do? It would catch it on fire. So you could do far more damage with a flaming arrow. It could wipe out an entire village if you, if you sent a bunch of them in. It, it, could, you know, it could catch people on fire who might catch other people on fire. And so these, these arrows, this, is, this was the major nuclear weapon of the day, okay? In Paul's day, the flaming arrows were the nuclear weapons. And so Paul says, listen, if you're going to stand, if you're going to fight Satan, you've got to make sure that you not only have these essential things on your shoes, your belt, the breastplate, but you've got to pick up. You've got to take with you that shield of faith because Satan's out there. He's firing fiery darts and he wants to destroy you and he just wants to ruin your life as much as he can. And so the way that we stand against Satan, the way we defend is through our faith. How many times has the devil whispered in your ear, you can't depend on God. You can't trust God. Do you know how you combat that? Shield of faith. I believe that God is on his throne and I can trust God no matter how difficult things get. Get away from me, Satan. Satan says, hey, you deserve more money. You deserve more recognition than what you're getting. The shield of faith. I believe that God will reward me as he sees fit. And I believe he'll supply all my needs. Get away from me, Satan. Satan comes at you. You're no good. God can't use you. Satan, I have faith that despite my past and what I've done, that God can still use me because I am saved and redeemed and forgiven. Get away from me. Satan comes up to you. You'll always be stuck in your sin. The shield of faith, I believe that through the power of Jesus Christ, I can get out of this and I can say no to sin because I have the Holy Spirit in me. Get away from me, Satan. I can be victorious. That is the shield of faith. When you take God at his word, when you trust God, and when Satan comes at you with those doubts, and when Satan comes at you with those, you're no good, you're all washed up, the sh you gotta take up the shield of faith and say, listen, Satan, I know I'm a sinner, and I know I've blown it. And I, and I know that I may not be rich like Croesus, I know that I may not have everything in the world, but I tell you this, I believe with all my heart that God's on his throne, that God loves me, that God can use me, God died, Jesus died for my sin, I believe that with all my heart, so get away from me, I'm a child of God. God. That's how you use the shield of faith. You answer Satan back with faith. And so using the shield of faith means that we stop trusting in ourselves. To use the shield of faith means that you and I stop trying to do it on our own. But we trust God. Using the shield of faith means that we stop trying to rely on our own strength. But we rely on his strength. Using the shield of faith means uh, to, that we stop thinking that we can solve the problem and instead we put our cares on him, casting all your cares upon him because he cares for you. That is using the shield of faith. Using the shield of faith means that you and I have got to get on our knees and turn it over to the Lord. Using the shield of faith means that we have to submit to God's will and trust him to walk us through it. Using the shield of faith means that we have to look to God for our help and for our protection and for our answers. You know, it's so easy, and I'm afraid so many times as Christians we get defeated because we get in the middle of the battle and Satan's firing the arrows and we're good at stopping them for a while with our faith, but after a while we lay it down and he nails us. To win, you've got to put on the battle, the armor of God. You've got to take up the shield of of faith. The Bible says that we walk by faith and not by sight. The Christian life is a life of faith, 
2 Corinthians 5, 7. We live by faith and not by sight. And you know, one thing about the Roman shields, they had the leather on them, and they were designed to be drenched with water. And the reason that they designed these shields so they could drench them and that leather would, would hold some of that water was so when those arrows hit them, they would extinguish. And, and the reality is when Satan fires his arrows at us, if we're holding up the shield of faith, guess what happens? They get extinguished. And Satan can't beat us. Now, there's another interesting thing about these shields. They did have smaller shields, but the main fighting shield they had was, like I said, about two and a half feet by four, uh, four feet. And the neat thing, and you've probably seen this in movies, is when the enemy would fire this barrage of arrows at them, you know what they would often do together? They would get together, shoulder to shoulder, link their shields together, and get down behind them. And they would form a wall. And so these arrows would come flying at them, and here they were behind their shields. And the arrows couldn't get through. And then when they would start to advance, many times they would advance together as soldiers, shoulder to shoulder, and they would hold those shields. And so it was like this big wall that would be advancing towards the enemy. Let me tell you something. God has designed it so that we grow in community. We need each other as we fight the spiritual warfare. We need each other. We need to see how God is working. We need to link together our faith with one another. And we need to hear those stories about what God's doing in, in each other's lives. You cannot be a strong Christian without other believers. The Bible knows nothing of Lone Ranger Christians. The church was designed to work in community with one another. We're to be together with one another in community. And so when we link our shields of faith together, the church is a strong force in the world. And we can stand together against the wiles of the devil. And so I just want to challenge you. When Satan comes up against you, take the shield of faith. Now look at verse 17. Here's the other thing we've got to take up. The other thing we've got to take up. And that is we have to take up the helmet of salvation. When I was in Indiana, I had a motorcycle. Suzuki 550, wind jammer, all those stuff. I actually even rode it in the snow. I was crazy back then. But in Indiana, you don't have to wear a helmet. And honestly, I didn't care to wear a helmet. I hate wearing motorcycle helmets. That's probably one of the reasons I don't have a bike today is I have to wear a helmet in Alabama. Because, you know, when you wear, it wouldn't be good for me to make hospital visits. I, you know, I don't know, it'd be kind of fun, I guess, to show up in the hospital room in my leather chaps and my helmet under the arm. And I'm from First Baptist Church. How you doing today? Um, that'd probably freak some of the chaplains out, um, which would be kind of fun, actually. So who knows? Maybe I will. But, you know, uh, I didn't like wearing helmets. And I did wear my helmet when I was in Indiana. I wasn't that stupid. Uh, but I did wear my helmet. But I didn't care to wear it. And there were times I didn't because you get helmet head, okay? I mean, just look, your hair looks terrible when you got helmet head. And it's hot. I mean, when, it, when you're riding in the summer, it, it almost takes away some of the joy because you're wearing this helmet on your head. But, but the reason for wearing a helmet, obviously, is this. If you have a wreck, hopefully you'll survive it. At least your head will survive it if you have a helmet on. And because the reality is, is the head is, it, 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 I mean, it's the brain center of the body. It's the optimal target in Taekwondo if, if you spar people. And if you kick them in the head, you get two points. If you're in the air when you kick them in the head, you get three points. So if you want to win matches, you kick people in the head. Okay, and I've been kicked in the head many times. That's part of what's wrong with me. But the thing is, the head is the optimal target. It's the optimal target, and Satan knows that. So one of the areas he guns for, we talked about last week how the abdomen, you get hit there, it's hard to stop the bleeding, and, and so he guns for that, and, and we have to filter everything through the word of truth, that's why we wear the belt of truth, but he also guns for the head. And you know what he does, how he guns for the head? Through our thoughts. Satan loves.